Okay, this is an introduction to the science of yoga. What I discovered in India 45 years ago, which takes us back to 1971, was that an elaborate description of energy vortexes, which they called chakras. Dr. Swami Gettinanda, whom I studied with, presented um, these concepts to us in a very scientific context and I could really appreciate that at the time and still do. I had jumped into the studies of yoga from my earlier studies in civil engineering and legal surveys which also require this logical and rational outlook so that was my frame of mind at the time. I had also rebuked the religions of the time in favor of the more scientific understanding of the universe and I preferred reading about Einstein's theory of relativity or Will Durant's philosophy of history over anything religious. When discovering that chakras were actually energy wheels vibrating at different frequencies, my logical mind accepted that there was something more scientific than mystical to be looked at in this realm. Now I have researched the phenomena for over 45 years. I have come to a deep understanding of energy vortexes, energy fields, quantum fields, and I teach about them as a system of energy working through body and mind. During these years I have extracted the science from its Indian entanglement in Hindu religion and found a wealth of information about the energetic aspects of the reality of the world in which we live. Having applied modern understanding to the essential nature of the chakras, I found six vortexes six fortis, forces governing the reality of the material world and through recent discoveries in quantum physics I realized that these two different outlooks were on the same thing. In chakra theory, however, there is a significant amount of detail about these quantities of energy which it seemed were now being discovered in the West and it was called or considered to be very ancient knowledge in India. Information about the precise frequencies at which these quantum vortexes vibrate or spin and the resulting effects of the vibration that the vibration has on our molecular and biological structure, this was not anything primitive cave dwellers would have had thousands of years ago. Yet this knowledge dated back to these prehistoric times. It was only decades later that I learned of Graham Hancock's very interesting research and discoveries about those ancient times and them not being primitive at all. That being said, I learned that it is the interplay between the various forces which creates the spiraling, vibrant structures we call atoms and molecules, and these which form into the still spiraling coils of our DNA. But underlying all of that molecular composition of what we perceive as reality is a field of consciousness that is connecting everything through communication and in fact keeping it all together. The concept of a unified conscious awareness, which is called Purusha in Sanskrit, is the foundation of the Eastern worldview. Everything else emanates from that. The unified field theory in modern quantum physics is an attempt to explain this type of consciousness which is known to communicate instantaneously across the vast distances of the universe. Now that it is known to exist, scientists are trying to measure its speed or whatever they can and fit this new component into their equations. The older ancient science of yoga has a very clear and systematic explanation of the quantum reality one which provides us with a better understanding of the interactive entangled forces. As an applied science, it also brings into practical methods for working with the energies of, at our molecular level so as to adjust, improve body function and brain functions at the glandular and cellular levels. In the realm of physics, we can explain these forces of the universal nature with the terminology of high school science just to make them understandable for most people. I will do that at three levels. That of our worldly body perceptions, that of the greater universe or cosmology, 
and the microcosmic world of our building blocks. The first chakra. It is an inward pulling power referred to as gravitation in physics. We experience this as the force which keeps our feet on the ground and consider it to be undeniably obvious. On the larger scale of the solar system and galaxies, it is seen as the power that holds stars together and the center point of black holes. In the science of yoga, we look into the microcosm to see and feel this at the level of our cells and their ability to hold themselves together, their ability to pull in the nutrition they need to grow and sustain themselves. Now at a much smaller level, we have the atomic structure of each particle in the periodic table. The force holding each atom together is also a type of gravity. We all know it is difficult to split an atom. The amazing power that keeps it one unit is a microscopic aspect of gravitation. To break it apart, we need a nuclear reactor, an atom bomb, or a hadron accelerator, or collider, but we don't really need to take them apart, or we shouldn't. In the practice of yoga, this energy is not a theory, but it becomes an experience as we learn to feel it, and then we can apply it as needed at our cellular and glandular levels. For the second chakra, the force is somewhat weaker, but in the same direction. It's pulling inward. In physics or chemistry, this is called covalence and it is seen as an attractive power that holds atoms together in a molecular formation. It is thought that they share electrons in a relationship or in entanglement, as it is called in modern physics, which bonds them for a while, tying them together. It also boils down to the milder attraction between positive and negative charges amongst the atoms. At the planetary scale, this can be seen as the orbiting aspect of moons around mother planets and planets around their suns. Gravity is still part of the equation here, balanced with the centrifugal force of the orbital motion. The interplay between these two forces is the balancing and loosely held energy of the second chakra. Movement is required to create this energy of centrifugal nature. When that motion is out of balance and the spin goes too fast, we find the, orbiting, the orbit breaking and the spin becomes a trajectory. This connects to the third chakra energy, which is the power of transformation and change. In a sense, the second energy is actually an intermediary and not a force of its own. Nevertheless, it is a major factor in the manifestation of the world since most everything we see is made of compound molecules, an assembly of atoms held together by this covalent force. Ultimately, this bond is a polar attraction from proton charge of one atom to the electron charge of another. In our human biology, this power manifests in the ability to combine amino acids into proteins and other metabolic activities an ongoing process within every cell, every gland, and every organ in our body. The third force we have is transformation and change. We see this one in fire at the worldly level and experience it as the heat and light of a burning candle, or whatever fire is. It is not a force that brings together like the two previous chakras, but rather one that breaks apart. As we add heat to an object, the molecular bonds weaken, become more flexible to the point of melting down things, and eventually the bonds are broken, with a resulting chain reaction amongst the molecules so that one sparks the other and they release electrons, photons, and waves that we can see and feel. At the planetary level, this is the aspect of the sun and stars. A similar power in the sun radiates that one outward into a radiance of sunlight, becoming the electromagnetic waves, and these are actually the fifth force. In our biology, this force becomes the digestive ability, which breaks apart the food we eat into smaller molecular components which can then be reassembled into our own proteins. As well, it becomes the cell metabolism which liberates energy for us to work and play with. 
The fourth power is another invisible energy that we can feel when we hold two magnets with the same polarity facing each other. They push away in what we call repulsion. This is the opposite of gravity, in a sense, one that does not let our feet fall through the molecules of the Earth to the center of the planet. It may not be as obvious as gravity, but is factual in the trillions of molecules in our feet exerting a repulsive force against the molecules of the Earth and we do not go any further than the surface. The same magnetic repulsion is there without the magnets. We must also remember that modern science has determined, at the molecular level, we are mostly empty space, even though it does not appear that way to our eyes, nor to our sense of feeling. At the grander scale of the universe, this becomes the expansion of the universe we observe when we are looking out at the cosmos the expansion coming from an explosion or simply through magnetic repulsion at any distance. In our biological reality, this force triggers the immune response wherein our body is striving to repel and push out anything which is not in harmony with healthy cells that make up our body. The fifth chakra is our technological savior for the present civilization dealing with electromagnetic energy, which includes microwave, telecommunication systems, internet, TV, radio, etc. We are using this power almost every second of the day, as you are using it now to view this. In our human reality, both our thoughts and speech are highly influenced by this energy, since it is in a constant state of vibration, and both our verbal thoughts and our speech are generated by vibration. At the more physiological level, this energy controls the speed or rate of our metabolism through the rate at which our thyroid and its thyroxin are actually vibrating. This state of metabolism affects all of our cells, from the most muscular to the most sophisticated brain cells. Subsequently, the speed of our thoughts are governed by this as well. The sun and every other star, which are also suns, are radiating this energy at all times. It fills every cubic centimeter of space and permeates each atom from every conceivable angle, traveling as a wave of possibilities until it snaps into the electron-proton duality that make up the atomic world. This is happening all the time and all over the place, and as a result, we experience our bodies walking around on planet Earth. Everything we perceive materially is, in fact, a configuration of atoms and molecules, yet we see only the outer configuration or shape, not the atoms. Nor do we see the electromagnetic waves as they collapse into particles. In fact, we see less than 1% of this energy in the form of visible light and only thanks to technological tools have we become aware of the greater reality. Chakra 6 puts a separation in the electromagnetic phenomena, giving us independent magnetic force. In our technical world, it is the, mag the magnets that we use to create electricity in the first place, simply by moving them. Without motion, it is a magnetic line a matrix, a magnetic field. Another invisible and subtle force, yet it is there at the center of every electromagnetic field, wave, and atom. At the Earth level, this magnetic field is what guides our navigation around the planet, not only in humans, but also in other creatures like the birds and the bees. The magnetic field is a torus pattern that is now known in physics to be the fundamental structure and of manifestation itself repeating itself at every level of scale of existence, from the atomic to the cellular to human to planetary to solar systems to galaxies, this pattern is repeated. It is also the matrix that holds everything, wave or particle, in its designated place. At the human level, it is through this energy that we direct our thoughts, as well as our actions, and of course, the central lab for our brain and body chemistry. The seventh chakra is the field of conscious awareness that is observing the entire manifestation. 
what is now called the unified field in quantum physics. Through its interrelated communication, it holds the electromagnetic ocean in order rather than chaos through its structure of the magnetic matrix. Each and all of the forces below are dancing their life into existence through their various vibratory frequencies of this electromagnetic substance. So, from the field of conscious awareness, we enter the magnetic matrix of the sixth chakra. From there we dive into the electromagnetic ocean of the fifth chakra. From there the interplay of the various frequencies produce the repulsion of the fourth chakra, the sparking transformation of the third chakra, the attractive covalence of the molecular structures at the second chakra, and the atomic gravitational force of the first chakra. This is all quite scientific and is the foundation of the science of yoga, as taught at the Pyramid Yoga Center and at the Chakra Yoga Center. Namaste.